Why didn't you wake me up? I'm gonna be late. Hey, stop panicking. It's only quarter to. You don't have to be up for another 15 minutes yet. I just said I'm gonna be late for my first time in this school. Yeah, there's no chance of that. I've been ready for this day for ages. Hey, I've done your nice breakfast and all as a treat. Dad, I'll just have a drink. I don't think I could eat anything. I feel dead nervous and my stomach feels all funny. You can't go to school with nothing inside you, James. You've got to start the day off properly. Now you go upstairs and get ready and um, just have something light to eat. Alright. And, James, you know that feeling in your stomach? That's probably excitement. Because I'm telling you, babe, you've got nothing to be nervous about. Hello? Oh, that's good. Uh, no, we haven't had a chance to discuss a colour scheme yet. Uh, is there something else you could be getting on with? Well, no, I can't decide right now. We'll discuss it when you arrive. That was Greg Shadwick. The building inspectors approved the work on the extension. Greg wants to know whether we've decided on a colour scheme yet. He says it's urgent. He's worried about our deadline. Have you had any thoughts about colours? Paint colour. You want me to talk about paint colour? <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but I've got more on my mind at the moment. For God's sakes, we've got to tell him something. Well, you can tell him to paint it bright blue with yellow spots for all I care. Good morning. Is it? No improvement, I'm afraid. See? I told you you'd feel better after a bit of breakfast, didn't you? Thanks, Dad. Hey, you were late last night, weren't you? Didn't think you'd be up to eat breakfast. Hey, you don't be so cheeky. Did you have a nice time with Pauline? <coughs> yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was really good, you know. You know what? I can't believe how grown up you've become, you know. With your new uniform and that. Can't tell you how proud you make me feel. Dad, I'm only going to private school. Only? It wasn't that long ago when kids like you were excluded from anything like this. You know, my mum and dad can only dream about sending someone like that to get a better education. Dad, you're not going to go on Martin Luther King on me, are you? You know, I have a dream. <laughs> you don't be cheeky. You don't know the half of it. I'm only kidding. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not that stupid. Hey, you're not stupid at all. You wouldn't be going to this fancy school. And if you must know, yeah, I do have a dream. And you getting a chance of a higher standard of education might just turn that dream into reality. And what's that? Did I become a lawyer or a teacher? Joke at you. This private school's costing me a fortune. I expect you to become uh, the first black prime minister at the very least. You can forget that for a start. <laughs> Any breakfast going, Dad? Ah, here's my other process here. And where are you going to be when you grow up, son? Give it a rest, will you, Dad? It's me day off. Never mind your day off. You should be out there looking for a proper job. Unless you fancy staying at the chip on a more permanent basis. Go down the job centre later with me, boys. There's no way to go job hunting in a gang. All we do is go and look at a board that tells us there's no jobs for us. Then we go about our business. You can't hang around at posses all your life, son. Look at your sister. She's not clinging to her mates. She's taking her first big steps towards becoming independent. But it's about time you did too. Good on her. I made up for her. But I think you're forgetting something here, Dad. How often did you go into town on your own when you were my age? I think your head's so full of what you want for our Gemma that you forget what it's really like for us out there. Hiya. Oh, I heard about the new arrival at the Brookside Close. Do you mind if I have a little look? <laughs> Not at all. Oh, look at the size of him. <laughs> it's hard to imagine we've got about that tiny, isn't it? I know, but they grow up so fast. Oh, I know, Kylie's six today. Oh, exactly. Next thing you know, she'll be at secondary school. <laughs> I bet Jackie's made up with him. Jackie? Yeah, well, he'd be a mate for little Will, won't he? All the other kids on the close are teenagers, apart from Kylie. You'd be someone to play with him, wouldn't you, eh? Well, uh, actually, we're not planning on staying around much longer. Oh, that's a shame. Peter, any idea what time she opens? Well, it's a little bit early for Eleanor, Rob. Well, uh, I must get off. I only popped out for some bin bags. It's amazing how many nappies they get through. See <laughs> Bye. See you later. Well, she'll probably be opening soon, unless she's gone to court or something. I don't believe this. How come nobody's ever around when you need them? Why, what's up? You in a spot of bother, are you? Hey. Oh, no. No, just, uh, 
just after a bit of advice, that's all, you know. Well, if that's all you want me for, I'm going to have to love you and leave you. How's it feel now? Bit nervous, but I'm OK. I could come in with you if you like. <laughs> you dear. You can go now, Dad. I'll be all right. What can't I just stay in with? No. So you're trying to tell me you're a big girl now and now you feel ashamed? Dad, no one else is paying the slang of mind. Yeah, all right, I get the message, Will. You have a good day, eh? OK. See ya. Ciao. See ya. Ciao. Sorry about that, there was someone at the door. So there's no way you can fit us in then? OK. Thanks for trying. Bye-bye. Oh, well, that's the third church to have given us a now. Yeah, well, I'm here now, and you haven't got my charms. Oh. I'll get as well. Oh, you haven't got Kylie more presents, have you? Peter, you gave her enough last week. Yes, well, that was last week. She's got to have something to open on her real birthday. I'm going to give them to her when I pick her up from school. Oh, seems everyone else got the same idea. She's done really well. And well, she deserves it after everything she's been through. Yeah, she does. Mind you, you know how crafty she is. She'll be finding an excuse to have two birthdays next year as well. Well, we worry about that at the time, eh? Hey, by then, you and me will be one and two, Mr and Mrs Peter Vila, won't we? And you won't be playing old Lindsay Corker. Hey, you. Uh, don't uh, be uh, getting so cocky or there uh, won't be any all wedding. Right, all right, <laughs> I promise I'll be here. Come on, let's get ringing down those churches, get one book before you change your mind. Mm. We've got it down to yellow. Have you got any particular yellow in mind? Pardon? You said yellow. You're going to have to be more specific, didn't you? You can't just walk into a shop these days and ask for yellow. They've got charts with hundreds of different shades of it. I haven't really thought about it. I don't know. One minute's rush, rush, rush. The next it's like no one's bothered. We are bothered, really. You're doing a great job. It's just, well, sometimes things happen and the little things no longer seem important. Come again. Well, how about sunflower yellow? It's a start, I suppose. <whistles> Shabak and Son. Katrina for you. Oh, that's in. Want me to see these? Yeah, yeah, sure, you can bring them round. When? Yeah, this afternoon's fine, yeah. Well, look, I knock off for me dinner at about one o'clock, so why don't you come round to us then? All right, then. Yeah, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see you later. Ta -da. OK. Thanks, bye. Oh, getting nowhere fast, do you? There's still a few changes near. We haven't tried yet, Lynn. Yeah, but they're all saying the same thing. They're booked up to two years in advance. So, plus, you said getting married was out of fashion. <laughs> yeah, well, we're not going to let a little thing like not having a church get in our way, are we? We're just going to have to get married in the registry office. Oh, but you had your heart set on a church wedding. Top hat, tails, all the trimmings. We can still have that. In a registry office. We've got no choice, Lynn. There's no way we're waiting two years. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Doesn't matter where we do it, just as long as we get married. Registry office it is, then, eh? Let's see how far we can get with that. All right, love, is Eleanor there? No, she's at work. Have we tried the office? Only about half a dozen times. There's not a flaming soul in sight. Oh, that's right. She said she's going to be in court all morning. I don't know, how can you just shut up shop and go swallowing off like that when people need you? If I'd have done that when I had the trading post, it'd have been murder. I'm sorry. It was just awkward, with Katie being on holiday and everything. Well, can I help you? No. No, you're all right, love. Thanks, anyway. Well, are you going to invite me in, then? Uh, yeah, sure. Come in. Oh, wait. Oh, don't you move. Let me get my camera. You ironing. Got to get a photo of that one, son. Ha <laughs> ha, very funny. Didn't any of my stuff there, miss. You joking, are you? Did I ever get to school OK? Yeah, yeah. She was a bit nervous, like, but... I should be fine. Rather here than me. All right, what's that? You wore that yesterday, didn't you? Yeah, it smells all right. 
Just a bit creased. And what's wrong with the stuff that I've already ironed and put in your drawer? It's all naff. This is the only decent top I've got. Well, you know the score on that one, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Get a proper job, make some money so you can buy your own. Hey, Dad, can I ask you something? Yeah, unless it's for more money than Chippy. It's about girls. Have we had this conversation already, miss? I just don't know how you can tell if a girl fancies your owner. I don't know. Got yourself a little admirer, have you? I don't know. That's why I'm asking. Oh, well, let's see now. Uh, well, does she smile at you a lot? Yeah, sometimes. What about presents? Has she given you a gift or a token of any kind? I mean, it's looking good if she has. No, she's never given me anything. OK. Well, do you ever feel that she's staring at you, only to find that when you look back, she quickly turns away? Yeah, she does that a lot. Well, looks like you might be onto something there, Mies. Who is it, then? Someone from school? No, it's Pauline's daughter, Andrea. Andrea? Yeah, so whatever you do, don't get married, cos I don't want to be going out with my own stepsister. <sighs> Andrea's a bit old, isn't she, son? She's only 22. Besides, I don't like going out with girls my own age. They're too childish. I know what I mean. Andrea's a woman. <laughs> You've got to learn to walk before you can run, you know. So don't you think I should ask her out, then? I don't know, son, but... But if I was you out there, uh, I'd find someone my own age, eh? Yeah, well, you're not me, are you? Word, please. I'm in rather a hurry. Look, I've been chasing you around all day. It won't take a minute. I just want a bit of advice, that's all. Mr. Dixon, that's how I make my living. Why didn't you make an appointment? It's not worthy, love, honestly. It won't take long. Very well. How can I help you? All right. To cut a long story short, I run this little cleaning business, you know. Well, this woman who does some cleaning for me has accidentally spilled tomato soup all over this fella's carpet. But the thing is, he says if I don't pay him £4,000, He's going to take me to court. Now, that can't be right, can it? Well, aren't those sort of things covered by insurance policy? Ah, well, that's a bit of a sticky subject, you know. Do you mean to tell me you haven't taken out adequate insurance? Well, I haven't got round to it, have I? I didn't know this was going to happen. It was just an accident. Mr Dixon, didn't you learn anything from your recent escapade involving a major gas explosion? You can't just go around having accidents like some kind of overgrown child. The consequences can be far worse than you can imagine for other people. The only advice I care to offer you is to grow up and pay up. Then perhaps you'll act more responsibly in the future. Here you go, you left this top in ours as well. So, but uh, didn't I give you that? No, we just used to borrow it all that. Well, you may as well keep it now. I hardly wore it anyway. Thanks. I'll sleep with it onto my pillow. You smell nice. Thanks. Where's your dad? No, he's gone down the parade to get his two sausage dinners, why? Nothing. I won't stay long. I am <clears> entitled <throat> to a dinner break, you know. Oh, you know what he's like. I mean, just don't take no notice of him. I don't. Why aren't you in work? I'm going in a bit later on. Don't you think that scares a bit sure for work? Why? Don't you think I look nice? Yeah. That's the problem, you look too nice. Are you sure you're not going to meet your boyfriend? My boyfriend? I'm not even seeing anyone. I can't believe that. I'm not. Why are you? Uh, no, not really. What's that really mean? I mean, no. <laughs> Why aren't you just saying no? Look, have you brought these CDs round just so that you can have a row with me? Just the opposite. I've came here to tell you that I've really missed you. Haven't you missed me at all? Well, of course I have. Why aren't you telling me? Oh, well, you know me. You know I don't go in for all that soppy stuff. You can always show me. You know what they say. Actions speak louder than words. Just me and Mo back together. What do you think? I've had a terrible time since we split up. I haven't been able to stop thinking about you. And that's what happens when you let go, fellas. Look at your fingers. Gee. How 
Oh, yeah. Jase, you haven't even buttered the bread. Just stop moaning, I don't want to do it. I've just been talking to Katrina. There's no use sitting around talking, I'm a push for time. It'll only take me two minutes to get through that. Right, I'd better go. Is it okay if you use the um? Yeah, of course it is. What's she doing here? I thought it was all over between you and it. What am I supposed to do when she comes around looking like that? Well, I don't know if we've got any, but I'll go and have a look. I meant to pick some up at the shops, but I've managed to come home without it. <laughs> I do that sort of thing all the time. I don't know what's happened to me lately. I've been so absent-minded. Well, at least you've got an excuse. Yes. Right, I'll go have a look. Would you like me to hold him for you? <laughs> well, well, well if, if, if you're sure you don't mind. Not at all. Oh, it's one of the reasons I came over. Oh. Just to have a look at this little one. <laughs> He's adorable. Oh, I know. I have to keep pinching myself in case I'm dreaming. I just can't believe he's finally here. Oh, he's here all right. And he's beautiful. It's hard to believe that anyone could give up such a beautiful child. Max and I are very lucky. So how are you coping? Oh, fine. Well... At least I think I am. It's amazing how much you forget all little things. Unfortunately, I missed out on Louise growing up. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I wasn't thinking. Um, well, how are the teenage years? Oh, they have their ups and downs. <laughs> it sounds like me. I was up and down all through the night making bottles for him. <laughs> but uh, what was it you wanted? Uh, tarragon. Yeah, I fancied cooking something a bit special. Am I right in suspecting a cosy little dinner for two? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> hey. Where's the posh car? Never mind the car, I'll get it go. I'll tell you when we get home. Bye, Lola. Who's that? Oh, just a friend. Now can we go? Friend, eh? Who'd have thought any of them would be here? I still can't believe we booked the registry office for our wedding. The 14th of November will be the most important day of our lives. <laughs> hey, how about Bob Ruki for the do? I've already checked. They've got another do booked in on that date, but if there's any cancellations, we've got first reserve. Oh, I hope we don't have to get anywhere in town. It'll cost a fortune. We'll be paying it off for the next five years. No, we won't. We'll be millionaires by then. Oh, yeah. And how's that? You know that leisure club Jackie Dixon's been? Yeah. Well, the more I think about it, the more I think we could get involved there, you know. How do you mean? Well, I'm not quite sure yet, but she's bound to want to do something with the hair and beauty side of things, isn't she? And as I'm already in business with her... <sighs> and how are we going to get the money for that? If I know Jackie Dixon, she won't be handing out any free meal tickets. Yeah, but I also know Jackie. And she's going to want to make sure that it's really upmarket, isn't she? And if we get in on that, we could really make a name for ourselves. And we could also make a few more bob than we ever could if I just stay a junior partner in the salon. Do you want a cup of coffee? Yes, please. So much for coming home early. Well, maybe he's been held up at work. Conveniently. Oh, how could I have been so stupid? Allowing myself to be fooled by Marcus a second time. You've got to stop punishing yourself. We've already been over the reasons why. Jeopardized everything for a few stolen moments of passion. My relationship with you, with Ollie. What could I have been thinking of? I wouldn't blame you if you went to Tom and Jones and never came back. I'm silly. I wanted to fall out with you because of what happened with Marcus. Don't let me interrupt you. Oh, I feel as though everything's coming in on top of me. I've never seen you so wound up. Eleanor, go and talk to Ollie. I know you can sort things out. I can cope with talking to Ollie. That's not it. Well, I just feel so unsure. I don't even know why I did it. Not really, not anymore. Did what? Earlier today, I went over to the Farnham's to borrow... <laughs> I don't even know what I went there for now. And Susanna showed me her new baby. A beautiful little boy with bright blue eyes. 
And it wasn't really Susanna's baby. Not really. It was a baby that had been given away by his mother. Just like I did with you. I wanted to get hold of that mother and shake her and tell her what she was like to lose. I made a mistake, Louise. I lost you once. I don't think I could bear to lose you again. I don't understand. How can you lose me? I'm not going anywhere. I'm the one that came looking for you, remember? It was a terrible disappointment to you. No! What is it? Why are you talking like that? Because I don't want you to hate me. <sighs> of course I don't hate you. I'm so proud of you. And nothing will ever change the way I feel. Here she is, Leo. Here's the star. Stop coming on, Zad. Leave it for you. Get your feet off the couch. You have footmarks all over a uniform. Oh, did they go? Go right. Hey, it went smashing. She made loads of mates. What was that one called? Uh, Laura? Yeah. Nice one. What about you, son? You get down the job centre? Yeah, but there's nothing happening. Yeah, well, at least you tried, eh? Right, what do you fancy for your tea? None for me, thanks. We're going up to Tyrone to give him the good news. What good news? Guess. Well, he just told me I haven't got a job, so it can't be that. Um, come up on the scratch cards. I wish. Now, you know before when you were talking and you said, if a girl gives you a present, it means she likes you. What did you get? I'm talking to you. Yeah, go on. Well, I went to the pictures before, and Andrea gave me all these tickets. Now, if that isn't a hint, what is? Oh, hang on, son, I mean, not exactly presents, are they? More like freebies, because she works there. Look, it's complimentary, not for resale. I mean, it's probably for all of us. Behave. Now, I'm telling you that, this is definitely a come on. She wants me to go to the pictures with her. Girls are more forward now compared to what they were like in your day. <laughs> Mind they? Oh, do you think I am? <laughs> you know what I mean. No offence, Dad, I appreciate the advice and all that. But you've already got two failed marriages behind you. Think I'm gonna go on my own gut feelings on this one. I'm definitely gonna ask Andrew out now. The Channel 4 book, Total Brookside by Jeff Tibbles, is available now from most bookshops. Next tonight, what happens when the silver spoon gets tarnished? Stories of people who seem to have it all but lost it on the way in downward nobility. He's off down to sunny Bristol today. Yeah, I am the savvy. Uh, just has a pop over and a little nutty. Oh, nice one. I'll put the kettle on there. Uh, coffee for me, please. So, how's it going? Sound. Hey, our Gemma started a new school yesterday, you know. Oh, nice one. How'd she get on? Yeah, a few first day nerves and that, but uh, I think she enjoyed it. Yeah, and once she's made a few friends, like. Yeah, yeah. Everything all right with you? Well, um, should be if you can do us a big favour. What's that? Well, it's something you could help us with. All right. Well, you know Tim's moved in. And with me going away, he's going to be on his own for a few days. Yeah? Well, I was wondering if you maybe think about Tim covering for me at the chippy while I'm away. You are joking. Come on, Mick. The lad deserves a break. Yeah, I know what sorts of break I'd like to give him. Seriously? The lad's working really hard to straighten himself out. Look, Sin, I know you mean well, but the lad's trouble, isn't he? All right, I admit he's no saint. You can say that again. How about the time we flooded the flat above the pizza parlour? Put me out of business and that? Yeah, but you did all right with the insurance, didn't you? I mean, you got the chippy out of me. That's not the point, Sin, and you know it. The lad's a scally. He just needs someone to take a chance on him. Someone to show a bit of faith. And he'd be doing me a massive favour. 
I'm sorry, mate. I can't. That ain't Mick. I've got too much to lose, Sim. Yeah, but you'd be there to keep an eye on him. And what about when I'm not? Well... You're going on to Bristol, aren't you? What if something happens while you're away? I don't know. No one neither do I. Look, I'm sorry, Sim. I can't help you. Hi. Hi. Aren't you going to be late? For what? Work. I'm not going in. Well, why not? What's wrong? Well, Danny's coming back from Bells this morning. And? <laughs> well, I thought it might be an idea if I was here to welcome him home. After all, he, he has been through quite a lot these last few weeks. Well, we all have. Yes, and some of us enjoyed it more than others. Oh, for God's sakes, can't we just move on, please? Or just forget about it. It's that simple, is it? You and Marcus never happened. Oh, no. You couldn't forget, could you? Let alone forgive. No, you couldn't do that. Too busy being a martyr. I beg your pardon? <sighs> Don't you think there are more important things to worry about than what happened between him and me? Like what happened on the clifftop? We're in this together, remember? I'll see you later. What time did our Nicky roll in last night? God knows, I went all that late. It must have been after two o'clock. I got up for a drink of water, she still wasn't back. I don't know what those crazy students are like. Yeah, a drain on resources. You what? It's cost me and your mother a fortune to put our Nicky through college and we expect to see something for it. Good my dad, it's early days. She's still settling in. Settling in? She's been out on the pop every night. When's she gonna do some work? Ah, morning, Maxie. Hello, Ron. Well, aren't you gonna ask me in? What for? So I can clean your home. Sorry? Jesse, she's called in sick. Says her corns are crippling her. So, send us to the rescue. Ron, I'm sorry. Jesse's not well, so I'm standing in for her. You? Yeah, great grannies. What about them? Jesse is a great granny, right? Uh huh. And she works for me. And as she's incapacitated. Ah! Well, um, Susanna, she's having a lie down and the baby is sleeping. Maxie. Don't worry about it, mate. They won't even know I'm there. Believe me, once I slip these marigolds on, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. That's me. Excuse me. I mean, she should be in the library, not the student bar. Yeah, Dad. Getting her head down instead of coming home pie-eyed. She must think I made the money. Hi. All right, Al. Hi. Good to see you. How much is the taxi? It's all right, Mum paid it to the door. Thanks. All right. Here, yeah, I'll take that. Good morning. Dan? Kids, eh? Talking to which? Oh, we usually are late at. Morning, madam. Oh, yeah. It's just still morning, isn't it? Yeah, it's just about. So what time did you get in last night? I don't know, I can't remember. You can't remember? Oh, shush, Dad, please, my head is throbbing. Yeah, too much lager and black, eh? It was a promo one in the union. Oh, never again. I'm glad to hear it. Now you've learned your lesson. Are you going to do some work? Work? You're joking, aren't you? It's fresh as week, no one does any work. <laughs> Best be going. I don't want to be late. What? Where are you going now? College bar, half price side, is it? Eh? You what? Don't wait up. <laughs> yeah, well, there's only one thing for it. What's that? Well, I can't leave Tim down here on his own while I'm away. And if you won't take him on in the chippy until I get back... Look, I'm sorry, mate. I've got enough headaches already. I'm trying to get money for Gemma's school. What's going to happen to Leo? Where's he up to? <laughs> well, he's still chilling out, which means he's never getting out of his pit. Sounds like a normal, healthy teenager. Ah, hmm? oh, well. Fair enough, you've made your decision, even though it leaves me in the lurch. One thing for it, I'll just have to take him with me. What, down to Bristol? I've got no choice, have I? And what's Monday going to make of that? I don't know. But if I show up on the doorstep with him, she can't exactly turn him away, can she? No, I suppose not. Anyway, I'll just have to sort something out when we get back. Thanks for the coffee. Has he been down the job centre? Turn it. Might cough something down there. I'm joking at you, Mick. He's got more chance of copping off with Pamela Anderson. You know what it's like down there. It's dead. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Yeah, if you could just get a start somewhere. Hmm. He's dead keen, you know. Someone will just give him a chance. And you reckon he's really changed, like? It's 
calm right down. And can I be trusted? Yeah. Why are you asking? Look, I hope I'm not gonna live to regret this, but um, when you get back from Bristol, uh, when you bring him into work with you. What, into the chippy? See how he makes out like, you know. Thanks, mate. I knew you wouldn't let me down. But hey, he only works when you work. I want you there to keep an eye on him. And Sin, he only gets the one chance. He messes up and he's straight out the door, and I mean it. Cheers, Mick. He'll be made up. Yeah, well, he better not let me down. He won't. I promise you. Anyway, I'll be there to make sure he doesn't. All right. OK. Could you tell him Danny called? Yeah. Say I was looking for someone to go tonight. Ta. Bye. You going out? Hopefully. You only just got back. So? Oh, nothing. I was just, uh, I was just hoping we could have a chat. Dan, is there a problem? What do you think? I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. Has it got something to do with your mum? No, it's got nothing to do with mum. Well, what is it then? God, you really don't know, do you? You just really don't know. Oh, well, I suppose I'd better be making tracks. Right. Got to drop a set of keys off with Greg Shadwick. There's a few jobs won't do now, and else he's going to sort them while I'm in Bristol, so. So you're looking forward to seeing Mandy and Ruth again? Yeah, too, right, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen little Ruthie for ages. But I won't even recognise her. <laughs> be a nice break for you as well, eh? Yeah, I could do with it. Get away after all the explosion and all that carry on, you know. Just need to get away and get my head sorted out. Yeah, too, right. Probably trouble's behind you, eh, lad? Yeah. Hey, and talking of troubles, what about yours? What was the name, Andrea and Pauline? Oh, that. Still playing happy families, eh? Yeah, I know. Well, I'm glad to see you can smile about it. Eh? Yeah, it's a bit of a laugh, isn't it? You what? If Pauline finds out you've been seeing her daughter behind her back, she won't be laughing, mate. She's going to string you up. Ain't hey, nothing's happened between me and Andrea. No, not yet. I tell you, mate, you're headed for trouble, and here it is now. Don't forget, I told you so. All right, how's it going? Great. You? Can't complain. Right, I'd better be getting off. Tell Tim he's going to Bristol with me. Have a good time, eh, mate? Yeah, I will do. See ya. Bye. And uh, say hello to Mandy and Ruth for us, eh? I will. Turn out, mate. So, what are you after? What are you offering? Oh, not here. OK, then my place. What? My place this afternoon. No, no, I mean... Hey, hiya. Hello, right, son. Hi. You were uh, talking to me? No, I had a message for your dad from my mum. All right. So is that OK, then? What? This afternoon. Yeah, yeah, I think I'll be OK. Great, then. Bye. Where are you going? Home. To wash my hair. The boy wonder. <laughs> <laughs> He's just woken up. Hello, my son. Ooh, you're a little cracker, you aren't you? <laughs> ah, is your tummy rumbling? Is it time for your bottle? Ron, why don't you call it a day? I haven't done your loo yet, Max. Oh, it doesn't matter. I mean, leave it till next time. I mean, Jessie will do it when she comes back. If she comes back. Sorry? The loose to say that there's still going to be a job for her. Things are moving so fast, you know, new bookings every day. I'm advertising for new people all the time. And I need reliable people, you see, because the good name of the great grannies is at stake. So, as soon as I've had me copper, he'll be sleeves up and bleach out. Uh, Ron, really, there's no need. Maxie, you are paying for a complete cleaning service and a complete clean you shall have. Tell you what, I'll make you the coffee while you give Geronimo here his bottle. <laughs> Must be a great feeling, eh? Sorry? You know, the pat of the tiny feet again. Oh, yes, it certainly is. I mean, it's fantastic. Well, to be honest, Susanna and I had given up all hope of having another baby, and then, <laughs> out of the blue, the adoption agency came up trumps. And you finish up with this little belt today? Eh? Yes, I know. Makes you wonder, though, doesn't it, eh? I mean, look at his chubby little cheeks. What sort of a person could give up a baby? Well, I don't know. Um, we weren't given any details of the mother, but, uh, well, I I'm sure she uh, had her reasons. 
I don't know. If it was me, I'd do everything to hold on to my own kid. I could never just give it away like that. Oh, well, I, I suppose some people are better at coping than others. Ah, yeah. I suppose you're right. And I'm speaking from bitter experience, eh? You know, losing our little Josh like that. My grandson. God knows if I'll ever see him again. If I'll ever have any grandchildren. Why? Oh, what makes you say that? Well, look at my kids. Ah, oh, Michael can't sort his life out. And our Jackie, there's no chance there, is there, eh? She's more interested in making money than babies. Now I'm telling you, Maxie, you don't know how lucky you are. Oh, hey, looks like I might have spoke too soon. <laughs> you getting off now? Yeah. It's me, Pauline. Yeah. So if uh, you could pop round and help Lindsay, eh? No problems. So, eh, uh, what time will you be back from Pauline's, like? In time for the tea time rush. See you later, son. Say hello to her for me as well. Yeah. Daddy's here. Hey, he's got a good pair of lungs on him, hasn't he? Oh, you can say that again. I'm frightened you'll wake up Susanna. Hey, Smiler, what is the matter with you? <laughs> well, he can't still be hungry. He's finished his bottle. What's your old dad been doing to you, eh? Oh, you want to come to your Uncle Ron, do you? <laughs> don't mind, do you, Max? You know, I, maybe I should take him up to Susanna, eh? No, you don't want to go waking Susanna. Your poor mum's been run off her feet looking after you, hasn't she, eh? Come on, come to your Uncle Ron. <laughs> you sure? Maxie, don't worry, I won't drop him. <sighs> come on. There you go. There you go. That's a lovely little boy he is, but his Uncle Ron, you're a little <sighs> cracker, you are, aren't you? Well, <laughs> look at that. It looks like um, you've got the touch. Never lost it, Maxie. Never lost it. Good old Grandad Dixon, eh? <laughs> oh, hi, Leo. What's this? New image for the chippy? No, I'm just slipping off for half an hour. Lindsay's looking after things. Oh. I've got to go and see someone. Oh, you got a job interview? Nah. Oh, I see, eh? Hey, someone I know. Yeah, Andrea. Andrea? Yeah, I'm gonna ask her out. Reckon she fancies me. I've got a real chance. <sighs> see you later. Yeah, see you later, mate. Mm. Hi. Peace offering. Dan. What? Please, can we just talk about this? What is the problem? Daniel, please. It's her. She's the problem. What? Oh, welcome home, Dan. This is my home, not so long as she's here. Oh, Daniel. What? She's a tramp. I beg your pardon? Well, that's what you are, isn't it, after you slept with Marcus? Are you going to allow him to speak to me like that? Oh, I'm not hanging around to listen to more of this. Good riddance. Dan, look. What? I try and explain. Don't you dare. What? Say I don't understand, because I do. I was there in the lakes, remember? I heard everything. Yes, I know that, but a lot of what Marcus said, well, it simply isn't true. So Eleanor didn't sleep with Marcus? <sighs> she did, didn't she? She went behind your back. Why are you putting up with her, Dad? Why are you letting her stay here? You and Mum sort of her exactly the same thing. That was my mum and my family. And you destroyed it all for the same thing. Finish with her, Dad. Just get rid of her. Anything, am I? Just got out of the shower. I see. No, just stand there. Come in. You can help me dry off. <sighs> Do 
Where's Danny gone? Upstairs. Do you want one? No, I don't want one. Suit yourself. It's the middle of the afternoon, Ollie. Ten out of ten for observation. Oh, for God's sakes. Yes. I don't know how much more of this juvenile behaviour I can take. Well, you may not have to. Sorry? Dan thinks that I should throw you out. Oh, does he? There's a surprise. Thinks you don't deserve a second chance. <laughs> out of the mouths of babes, eh? It's better. Nice and dry. Yeah. You comfortable? Yeah, sound. So you managed to get away all right? No problem. One of the advantages of being the boss. <laughs> what? You, the boss. So what's so funny? Just a big softy, really, aren't you? Am I? Yeah. Just like a big bear. <laughs> what? All soft and cuddly. Just the way I like it. Away. Who's that? I don't know. Persistence with her I better get it. Don't you be going anywhere. Don't worry. I'm staying right here. Oh God, it's Leo. What? He's seen me. Look, he can't see me. Eh? Well, quick, get in the kitchen. I'll try and get rid of him. So what have you got on tonight? I don't know, probably seeing Katrina. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely back on then, you two. Yeah, well, see how it goes, eh? And what's that supposed to mean? Nothing, I just hope you're a bit more careful this time. <sighs> don't worry, we've learned our lesson. Yeah, well, I hope so. Aye, aye. Look who's back. You don't mind me calling by, do you? No, of course not. I was just passing, like. It's always nice to see you. Is it? Yeah, it's just something a bit tied up at the moment. What with? I'm on my way out and I need to get dressed. All right. You finished your drink? Yeah, yeah, it's all. Another time, eh? Yeah, I'll have to be getting back now anyway. Right. Right. See you around then. Yeah, see ya. Um. Look, I don't really know how to say this. Say what? I wasn't really passing by. I came round here to see you especially. Eh, uh, look, I just want to know. Will you go out with me? Dad, I think I'm going to be sick. Not in the middle of the close, you're not. So listen, don't forget, if you ever need a babysitter, just let me know, OK? Uh, yes, I'll bear that in mind, though. See you, mate. I love you, Dad. Yeah, but you've got a funny way of showing it. Everything all right? Yeah, it sounds, yeah. She doesn't look too clever. It's just something she's eaten, I think. I love you too, Jason, my good brother. Come on, let's get it inside. Coming on at two in the morning's bad enough, but in the middle of the afternoon, rotten drunk. If you think I'm going to put up with this, carry on. Okay. I've got another thing coming. Dad! What? I think she's going to be... <laughs> <laughs> is it just because I'm younger than you? No. Well, what is it, then? Look, Leo, I'm seeing someone. You what? I'm really sorry. Who are you seeing? Just someone. Well, who is it? Do we know them? It's an older fella. You what? How much older? A few years. Quite a few years. <sighs> who is it? Look, it doesn't matter. God, so I haven't got a chance, like. I'm really sorry. Yeah, so am I. Look, I'll see you around, yeah? Yeah. Take care. You can come out now, he's gone. Close shave, eh? Yeah, too close for comfort. So where were we then? What? Where were we? Look, another time, eh? Better be getting back. Do you really think that's going to solve anything? No, but it might help me forget. Please, can we talk about this? Yeah, sure. What do you want to talk about? Are you screwing Marcus? Oh, please. Or maybe we should talk about how we killed him. 
God's sakes, keep your voice down. Danny's upstairs. Well, we've got nothing to hide. Or have we? Sorry? Guilty consciences, maybe? We've done nothing to feel guilty about. We let him fall, Eleanor. He slipped. We could have saved him. No. Let him go. Those words are still ringing in my ears. For God's sake, he was trying to kill you. Every night, the same nightmare. I can see his face and the words over and over again. It was inevitable. We had no choice. Oh, that's what you're telling yourself, isn't it? Yes, and you must tell yourself the same thing. It was you or him. Well, maybe it should have been me. What? Maybe that would have been the best thing for all concerned. What? Why are you saying these things? Because that's the way I feel. Because this whole thing is an unholy, bloody mess. Lies, deceit, infidelity. In the name of God, you're pathetic. OK, yes, yeah, so I slept with Marcus. Yes, and you didn't even have the decency to take proper precautions. Unprotected sex with a jail what? bird. If you believed the word of the crap that Marcus was spouting, you'd have had an AIDS test by now. Oh, why should I bother? With my luck, if anyone's going to get AIDS, I will. <gasps> you're pathetic! Have you heard yourself in your sanctimonious claptrap? OK, yes, I screwed up. But this, oh, we're in this together. And this is the biggie, all right? And we're both in this up to our necks. If we accept your analysis of the situation, then we both let him go. We both could have saved him. And if we accept that, then we both killed Marcus. Which amounts to nothing less than murder. Understand? <laughs> Lecturing me on infidelity. Well, on the Simpson scale of morality, where does that rank when it comes to murder? Now, Phoebe's got a kind nature, but what about her nurture? She gets an offer she can refuse in Friends, next on 4. Sorry to bother you, is your lens in? Oh no, you've just missed it. Uh, so I'm going out tonight, so I wonder if she'd cover the shift for me. Could you ask her to room me, because I need to know as soon as possible. Mind your back, sirs, late for a staff meeting, all right, Mick? All right, Jimmy, someone looks busy. Listen, I've been up since half six, marking all my projects. I'll tell you, one in a chippy. It's a doddle. <laughs> see you later, look. <laughs> okay. See you, Mick. Yeah, see you, Jimmy. Ta da! <laughs> hey, walk, don't run, Corkill. So will you tell your Lindsay then? I've got to drop our Gemma off, pop into town, I'll be home in about an hour. Listen, don't worry about that, love. I'll say yes on her behalf. I mean, the wedding's not going to be far off, so she needs all the money she can earn. Cheers, Jack. Got a hot date tonight, have you? Well, not quite. Still seeing that girl who works with Peter? Yeah, when I can. Look, I'd better give my Gemma a shout too. See you later. See you, love. <laughs> Can you turn the music off, please, Dan? I can't talk with that on. This is ridiculous. Do you know that? Why won't you go to bed at night? Why won't you go to school? I don't want to. This is getting us nowhere. You sound like some juvenile delinquent. I don't want stubbornness, Dan. I want reason. Now, why won't you go to school? Why are you behaving like this? Talk to me. Come on. Give me one good reason why you're acting like this. 
Come on. Well? You know what I want. I want that Sam out of here. All right. So this is some crude form of blackmail, is it? You stay up all night playing computer games and I'll show her the door. You refuse to start the most important part of your school life and I'll throw her out. Why not? Because it's not as simple as that, Dan. I can't believe you. After what she did, my mum didn't get half the chance. Because your mother did it twice. She was sacked for sexually harassing a man at work. That's why we lost our home, remember? And then she did it again with, with Mike Dixon and, and other men I've never heard of, for all I know. And you didn't know how many times Ellen has done it since she's been living here. She went with Marcus Seddon, nobody else. And what does that make her? You see, I'm right. And if you agree with me, why don't you throw her out? I, I can't. Why? Why forgive her when you wouldn't forgive my mum? I haven't forgiven her. Then why is she still living here? Go on, then, you talk. You tell me why. Because with your mother, things had gone wrong for years. I I didn't have the same feelings. I don't want you slugging my mum. Just, just get kissing out of here. Please, Dan, it, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Just go away. Just leave me alone. I bet you're hoping you have to carry all those every day. This is only some of them. I've got to go back later when the new stock arrives. And, um, then I'm going to Adelphi to meet someone from Marcus's publishers. What? Book signings and radio interviews and everything. They even want me to go to the launch in London. They want me to take over the daughter who found her real father. That will be the angle for the publicity. Well, you can't. If I don't, it'll only be some kind of low-key launch, so they say. And they've invested thousands of pounds already. Well, that's their problem. What? Can't you see what'll happen? I mean, Marcus wanted to be the big eco-martyr who lost the best years of his life to the cause. And if you do this, you'll make that stupid wish come true. The PR people and the media will want to portray him as some kind of saint. You can't do it. You're doing it again. You're making him out to be some kind of monster. He wasn't. He was. He was evil. That's not fair. And if you hype this book with all the nonsense that Marcus brainwashed you with, then you'll be giving the public a totally false picture. You'll be helping to create the myth. No, I won't. I knew him. I'll tell the truth. You won't, because the publicists won't allow you to. They'll want to portray him as a saint, not as a psychopath that he was. Come on. So his mind was twisted. That's all. But it was prison that made him like that. All those years, all the terrible things that happened to him in there. Says who? I mean, how do we know what happened to him? You heard what he said. We told us at the cottage. It was horrible. I heard what he wanted us to hear, yes. But it could have all been lies. It could have been a complete fantasy. How do we know what actually happened to him inside? Why would he lie? Who knows? Why did he do all the things he did to us in the cottage? Perhaps he was one of the hard men. One of those brutalizers he kept banging on about. Or perhaps he kept his head down and grew cabbages in the prison garden. We just don't know. But you're prepared to go along heedlessly with the publishers to perpetuate this myth. All I want is for as many people as possible to know what Marcus stood for. Even if it means ruining my life? Our lives? If I have to, I'll take legal action against the publishers. You can't! If it means I can escape from the ghost of this man, I'll claim it contains libel against me. I will do my utmost to stop or hamper its publication. Hey, hey. Who's Mr. Cool, then? Is this smart or what? Mm, look a bit smarter without the bum fluff. I'm growing the muzzy. What for the millennium? A long take a week or two. You want to put money on that? So what do you want the muzzy for? I look too young. Don't be soft. It's your birthday tomorrow, you're 17. You look what you are. I know, but if I looked that bit older, I'm sure Andrea would say yeah, then. Forget Andrea, son. How can I when she's wasting the time some old fella? See you later. Mick, all Lindsay's fine for tonight. Cheers, Jackie. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. <laughs> Does that mean I'll get taken out tonight? I'd say you're definitely on. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> See you, love. Well, he just seems to have started crying for no reason. Oh, is he hungry? 
Well, you shouldn't be, but I was taking him round to the shops and, and he wouldn't stop crying, so I, well, I thought I'd better get him home, give him another feed. Oh, yeah, that should do the trick. Did he have a restless night, love? Oh, no, no, not really. Listen, do you want me to pick something up for you? I'm going that way, you know. Would you? I've got it all written down. My mind's like a sieve at the moment. Yeah, I was the same when I was pregnant. You sure you're right? No, I'll be fine once I get him settled. OK. Listen, I might be a while with the stuff, cos I've got to see my sister. Right. OK, thanks. Sure. Yeah, I'll just put a tenner in. I didn't know what to get him. Hey, he'll be made up. That's more than generous. Just put it on the table. What's this? Oh, uh, Ron Dixon's running a new recruitment drive for Great Grannies. Why don't you apply? Oh, are you? Watch it. <laughs> hey, look, you know I said we were going out tonight? Yeah, Lindsay's covering her, Mum just said. Oh, no, we're still going out. But uh, do you mind if our Leo comes in on? Oh, suits me, that's fine. What about Gemma? Gemma's gone to London on a school trip. You see, Leo's gone out with his mates tomorrow night, so I won't get to see much of them. There's no need to explain, I told you, it's okay. I'm gonna miss being on my own with you, though. Do you wanna make it up to me now? I thought you were working. Got no appointments till after lunch. Oh, well, our Leo could come in at any minute, you know. I just passed him on the way out. He was all dressed up, was he going? To see your Andrea. Andrea? What for? Well, he's got a bit of a thing for her and um, he's gone to ask her out. Well, I never. <laughs> don't mention anything, will you? I don't want his feelings hurt. No, I won't say anything. Anyway, what about my suggestion? I'm sorry, I can't. Not here. I don't know if there's a chance that Leo could come in. I'll put the girl on there. Mm, that's a poor substitute. Go on, then. <laughs> I'll do anything to make sure the public saw him for what he was. A psychopath and a fantasist. He wasn't a fantasist. I'm sure he wasn't. It was prison that twisted his mind. He was ill, mentally ill. And not fit to be turned into a saint and a martyr. Please, Louise, go and see the publishers and tell them you won't take part. No. No. I don't want to fall out over this. But I do still believe in what he stood for. Well, I suppose I can't stop you. But I can fight you. I don't want to do that. But if you persist in chasing this myth of Marcus Seddon and building him up into some kind of false prophet, then he's going to come between us. I'm sorry you feel that way, but... Then you've got a fight on your hands. I'll go to the Home Office and the, the prison service and I'm going to find out the truth about his time in prison. And I think I'll find out a lot more than Marcus Seddon revealed. And I'll use it to smash this myth. Aren't you overreacting a bit? No, Louise. And I'm deadly serious. I'll do whatever it takes to destroy his reputation before he destroys you and me and what we have left between us. Right. I'll be off then. I thought you had no appointments. No need to rush off, is there? You haven't changed your mind, have you? I might have. Well, maybe you've missed your chance. Uh, <laughs> I think I definitely have. We're here, Lee. Strike while the iron's hot, mate. All right, son. Hey. You look smart, Leo. Thanks. I bet you have all the young girls after you, don't you? Obviously, you're not giving anything away about your love life. Uh, Pauline brought your birthday card on, you know. All right, thanks. You're welcome, love. Look, I'll get going. I'll see myself out. All right. I'll call you about tonight. Mm -hmm. Bye. See ya. Bye. I can't understand it, Dad. Not back again, son? Yeah. What do we think it's time you did what I said and just forget all about Andrea? But she's always said friendly, always smiling and that. But when I ask her, it's like she doesn't want to know. You think she's playing hard to get? I think she's trying to let you down lightly, son. She doesn't want to hurt your feelings. But it's doing me head in. I really like her. I understand that, Lee. But you can't make somebody fancy if they don't. It just happens. Are you going to that club tomorrow night, are you? When you just hang around your friends, you'll soon find a girl you like who likes you. She won't be the same. Come on, Leo, cheer up. He's 17 tomorrow. Anyway, me and Pauline are taking you out tonight to celebrate. We've got such a lot to look forward to, you know. 
When 17, you want to be having a good laugh, not moving around after some girl. I wish I was 27. Hey, don't be soft. You don't want to be wishing your life away. But she'd go for me then, wouldn't she? Instead of someone old enough to be a dad. I'm sorry I'm late. Oh, Val dragged me into town. Oh, I haven't woken you up, have I? No! No, no, I... Anyhow, um, there's your receipt and your change in there. I'll give you hands with you, shall I? Oh, I can manage. You don't mind if I don't ask you in, but I've just got him off. I don't want to wake him up. No, that's all right, love. I've, um, I've got to be thinking about putting the tea on anyway. Listen, love, I, I hope you don't mind me saying, but you look worn out. Are you sure you're OK? I've just forgotten what it's like with a new baby, that's all. Are you sure that husband of yours is pulling his weight? If he's not, you know, you want to be telling him. He does what he can, but he's very busy at the moment. We're trying to make a few changes. Oh, no, look, I've got to go. Thanks for getting these. So look at the mess you're making. If you waited an hour, there'd be some supper for you. Hungry oh, now. You make sure you're on your best behaviour. Hi. Hi. You're a bit earlier than I'd expected. I haven't started supper yet. I thought we might sit down and talk about things. What do you say, Danny? I've got nothing to say to you. Th we'll never sort things out if we don't discuss what happened. And the way you're behaving is not helping anyone, least of all yourself. He knows this. And you know what I want. Life has to go on, Danny. They're your A-levels. They're your whole future. You've got to go back to school. I don't need to be told what to do by you. I know you're hurt, but acting like this just isn't the answer. I mean, look at Louise. She's hurt. She's had a really bad time. But we all have. But she's buckling down to it. She's starting university on Thursday because she knows it's her future. Come on, Dan. Listen to reason. You're really not helping. What about these beans? Going out. I just can't get through to him. Well, you just have to. Do you have any idea how difficult it is to explain, to, to justify why you're still here when I can't tell him the truth about what happened to Marcus? Then we'll just have to give him more time. There's too much at stake to risk splitting up now. I don't want Danny coming between us. How can you be so calm? Because I have to get you through the inquest. Are we going to have to give evidence? Yes. So we better start getting our story straight. You mean false evidence, don't you? I'm talking about the truth as we both remember it. Because we both risk facing a murder charge. If one of us gets something wrong, the police will start going over everything again. Ron's advertising for an office manager for his granny's business. Maybe I should apply. Hey, I don't want you lying in his pockets, you know. I don't care how skimp we are. Don't worry. I see enough of him at the petrol station. I thought you'd finish this lot this morning. Yeah, well, this is another load, isn't it? Never stops, does it? Uh, well, wouldn't be so bad if it was just the marking. But I've got all sorts of assessments to write and forms to fill in. So don't let anyone tell you the Plunkett's bureaucrats knock off at half three and have endless holidays. Right, I'll leave you to it. Come on, me lad out. Mm, bath time. Here you are, love. I'll do that. Don't be so soft. You're busy. Not too busy to spend time with this fella. What's this, Wills? Look. What is it? It's a splash book. Waterproof book. Just the thing to teach my son and heir how to read while I'm getting him clean. <laughs> it's too old for him, Jimmy. You can't teach him to read at his age. Get out of it, will you? You're never too young to start learning the shapes of words. Look at that, son. See the shape of the words. See that? <laughs> anyway, it's National Year of Reading. I learned that from one of those posh papers I started reading. What are you doing reading papers like that, eh? They're twice the price of the ordinary ones. Not if you nick them from the staff room, they're not. <laughs> Come on, Wills. I'll have to get Max Farnham round here for lessons. On what? Splash books or knicking newspapers? No, I saw Susanna this morning. She looks knackered with that new baby they've adopted, you know. I don't think Max is doing, is she? Uh, is that a compliment, then, or what? Yeah, it is a compliment. 
If I'd have seen you like this two years ago, I'd have thought it was dreaming. Well, it's all about <laughs> upward mobility, love. Oh, why? Did you read that in your posh papers, too? Hey, you'd be surprised at what I'm learning. Who knows? This lad of ours might end up middle class. It's a shame Gemma couldn't be with us. <laughs> I don't think she'll miss our company, not when she's down in London with the girls from school. Mm. They're going to ballet tonight. Oh, it'd be nice. Today they went to the National History Museum, and tomorrow they're going to meet our MP at the House of Commons. Oh, oh. I've never been to London. Oh, I don't worry, Leo. You'll get your chance one day. <laughs> the only decent place we ever went in Brookside Count was at one's house. <laughs> I remember Andrea going there. Didn't Andrea want to come tonight? Your dad didn't ask her. Well, I didn't think she'd... You know. It's all right, mate. She's going out anyway. With a boyfriend? I don't think so. I don't think she's got a boyfriend at the moment. Oh, I thought she had. No, I don't think so. Can I get you another drink, Leo? Yeah. Yeah, I'll go. It's all right. I want to get Leo a drink for his birthday. Yes, I knew she would. She's been the old fella. <sighs> right, that's that. The best can wait till the morning. I should think so. Oh, Paul Lindsay was working. We could have gone out for a drink, love. Mmm. If you want. Oh, I'm just about potless. Hi, oh, well, hold on Friday, my first paycheck. I couldn't have gone us a couple of cans of lager. You're right. You go and have a pint. Yeah, I'm not going to go very far on that, am I? Might as well stay in. Go on, that's a tenner in my purse. You sure? Yeah, I am sure. You deserve it. Mm. Oh, thanks, love. Mm. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Delish. Oh, you're like a big kid, you are. <laughs> you leave him alone, it's his birthday. Is Andrew? Hiya. How's the party going? All right, I didn't know you were coming here. I wanted to make sure Leo got my card. Me? Of course it is. Thanks. Happy birthday for tomorrow. Uh, can I get you a drink? Uh, white wine and soda, please. I'll get it. Mmm, that looks nice. Can I have some of yours? Mmm, don't you be eating it all. I am 18. I can prove it. There's my dad over there. You have to do better than that, son. Try it, Mick. Not enough of it. They wouldn't save me. I told you that. You don't need to remember. Oh, never mind, Leo. Yeah, I'll get it. No, it's all right, Mick. I'll get it. You keep her gate crusher company. She's not a gate crusher. I'm glad she's here. Oh, oh, you know. <sighs> Where are you going tomorrow night, Andrew? Only me and my mates are going to that new bar on the high street. There'll be a gang of us if you want to come. Uh, sorry, Leo, I'm working. Gemma's in London on a school trip. Is she? How long is she down there for? Uh, back tomorrow. Well, they have to really. She's staying at her mates because they don't get back till late. It's going to be all on your own. Ah. <laughs> Dan must be starving. Maybe I should look round. He'll come home when he's hungry. You can't be running after him. Oh, do you have to? You drank bottle after bottle of that stuff last week. One night without will do you good. Anyway, you need a clear head for what we have to discuss. What? Our story for the inquest. Well, we have to start preparing sometime. Look, isn't there some way out of this? I mean, you're the lawyer. Can't you stop an inquest? No. It was death in unusual circumstances. I can't face anything like that. You have to. We both have to give a plausible story at the inquest. But we'll be perjurers. I can't go through with it. I just can't. Do you want to go to prison for life? Because I certainly don't. All I wanted was a holiday. And after all I've been through, now I have to face this. For God's sakes, don't be so feeble. It was justifiable homicide. He could have killed all of us, and you're whinging on about telling lies in court. Look, we just have to get a verdict of accidental death, and we'll be home and dry. I can't believe you're talking like this. I can't go through with it. Yes, you can. You'll do what I say, when I say it, and we'll get out of this. I promise. You can die for us to be on our own. Oh, you gotta stop all this messing around with your mum and Leo a day. So it's okay any other time? No. Come on, Mick. 
We know what we want. The kids won't be around tomorrow night. It'll be just you and me. Look, this is wrong. It doesn't feel wrong to me. It's not wrong. It's chemistry. Next, as Mother Nature goes on the rampage, a case of the survival of the luckiest, Equinox welcomes you to Killer Earth, here on 4. Hey, kid. How's the heir to the Farnham Empire? <laughs> oh, fine, thanks. Ah, oh, look at him. <laughs> it's a little cracker, isn't he? Yeah. Here you are, kid. Eh? Put that in your piggy bank, eh? Here oh, thanks, Jimmy, but you don't have to, really. Well, get out of it. My old mother would never go past a newborn baby without crossing his palm with silver. Here, take it. Bring the little fellow a bit of good luck. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you've started taking the Guardian. Not my fault if they leave it lying around. Do you know, I know he's adopted and that like, but he's the spit of your Maxie, isn't he? Hey, look at him. Well, I can't stay around to chat. He's due for a feed. Decided what you're going to call him yet? <sighs> we can't decide on a name we both like. How oh, about Calvin? I mean, I wanted that for our little William, but my Jackie wasn't having it. I mean, I wouldn't mind if you used it for your little fella. Well, I'll bear it in mind. Thanks. See you later. Bye. Ah. Uh... Hi, hi, Mick. Been doing your big shop, have you? Yeah. Hey, yeah, well, Lindsay said it's your birthday today, kid. It is, yeah. Many happy returns of the day, happy birthday and all that. But you'd rather be out with your mates, wouldn't you, than doing the shopping? Don't mind. I've been saying he should go out, uh, but he said he doesn't want to. Yeah, I'll some ticket, will you, please? Yeah, uh, you want to get yourself out and about, enjoy yourself. Bit of girl trouble, you know. Ah, right. Well, someone chucked him. No, no, no. Somebody he likes who's not interested. But I've told him there's plenty more fish in the sea. He's a good-looking lad. Can have his pick of the girls, can't he? <laughs> True, right, you can, yeah. But, you know, when someone you like doesn't want to know, it can't be easy, can it? Hey, especially for kids of his age, you know, teenagers. <laughs> hey, what, Jimmy? I don't know what we do with all this food, but I'll tell you one thing. This time next week, it'll all be gone. <laughs> well, you must need to keep your energy up here, mustn't you, eh? You know, keeping the mother and daughter on the go at the same time, like... You what? Make a saw you in Bar Brookie, necking the face off that Andrea one. What are you like, eh? Pulling a bird young enough to be your own daughter and knocking off the mother at the same time? <laughs> Making all kinds of assumptions, Jimmy. You don't know what you're talking about. All right, keep your head on. No, son, you take them and I'll get the rest. Yeah, OK. Look, for your information, me and Pauline split up before I started seeing Andrea. Not that it's any of your business, like. And as for Andrea, well, uh, we're really into each other. So there's nothing dodgy going on, OK? All right, sorry. So just keep your nose out of my personal life in future, all right? OK. See ya. That'll be your notification of the inquest. Oh, you and I both got one, too. I can't 
also relishing the thought of the trip back to the lakes. You okay? I'm gonna have to be. Although, to be perfectly honest, perjuring myself has never been one of my greatest ambitions. Look, it's not as though we've got to stand up in court under oath and lie outright. I mean, we've just got to be careful about our version of what happened. <laughs> Being economical with the truth, you mean? Oh, great. Now I really know how low I've sunk. All right. I think our little walk gave him quite an appetite. Mm. And the one of Ron's leaflets has been delivered. He's looking for more staff. <laughs> business is booming, eh? Well, I think we should give him a bit of business because I just don't know how I'm going to be able to cope. Look, I, I know the place is a bit of a mess and I, I know how hard it's going to be as well, but I don't think we should have anything to do with Ron Dixon's agents. Oh, well, it's easy enough to say. Well, look, we can't risk having him round again, not with a baby. Have you any idea what it'd be like if you found out? Well, how are we going to manage? I'll do it. You know, I think we should get the baby registered today. <laughs> we keep putting it off, but I think we should do it as soon as possible. You don't mind if I don't come, do you? No, not if you don't want to. I don't really relish sitting there telling all Jackie's details to the registrar. I understand. All we need to do now is to choose a name for you. Yes, and quickly. Can't keep calling your baby forever. <laughs> not staying in on your birthday, are you? Yeah. Why are you going out to knock for Mono and Dagger? Can't be part. Come on, you can't not see your mates on your birthday. Give me head in. What do you ever want to do is mess about. Try to do something more interesting like things aren't you was. What? Well, she goes to see good films, not just ones where everything gets blown up. And she goes to a dead trendy wine bar in Southport. Man and my dad are just going to go down the swan because they can get saved there. Andrea's a lot older than you, son. She's bound to want to go to different places, do different things than you and your mates. Yeah, but there's no reason why I can't be more like her. She's only a few years older than me. Yeah, but you can't slide off on your boy just because you fancy an older woman, though. But I'm 17 now. I can drive and everything. And pass me test and take her out in your car. Look, son, no matter what you do, she's still going to be too old for you. You find another girl. Who's I mean, that girl that used to like, um, Katie Campbell? She was nice. Yeah, but she's not Andrea. Yeah, but she's the same age as you. You've got to forget about Andrea. It's not going to happen. How do you know? I just know. Look, son, you've got to face up to it. Andrea's not going to be interested in going out with a 17-year-old boy, no matter who it is. Look, I know it's hard. But I'm just telling you for your own good. I don't you get an hurt. I reckon you just don't want me to go out with Andrea. Don't be soft. I reckon you're just thinking about yourself. What do you mean? You know. You know what? That if me and Andrea are going out together, it make things awkward for you and Pauline if you want to get married. It's not that son at all. Honestly. It's not that serious between me and Pauline. And I'm certainly not planning to get married to her or anybody else. Believe me, son. I'm only interested in you. And I don't want you to build your hopes on something that's not going to happen. Come on. It's your birthday. Spend it with your mates. Now, look. There's a few, Bob. Go knock for the lads. Take them bowling or something, eh? See you later. Yeah, I'll see you. I know you're not even watching this. And if you don't want to talk, then that's fine. But if you change your mind, I'll be here. It's all right. I like natural history programs. They often tell us as much about humans as they do about animals. Oh, really? Yeah. We all share the same characteristics. Self-interest, self-preservation. You'd be surprised how many species are dominated by the female. Especially in the insect world. The female often devours the male after he's outlived his usefulness. Or she finds another insect that she likes. And what's that supposed to mean? Nothing. Look, Danny, I'm trying to help you here. But you've got to realise that all these constant snidey remarks are referring to my parents and the death of my dad. Sorry. Well, it's not just me you're upsetting. What about Eleanor? I know you think she's to blame for all this, and yes, she's made some mistakes. But right now, her and your dad want to make a go of it, and it's up to us to try and support them. Should we? Because whether you like it or not, they're our parents and we're stuck with them. And whatever choice they've made, we've just got to go along with it. That's life. Why well, should we put up with it? They'll probably end up splitting up anyway. 
Well, if they do, I know it won't be because of me. What's it to you whether they stay together or not? Well, maybe I feel guilty about telling Marcus where the cottage was. I don't know. But what I do know is I want to give them a chance to try and make things right. I don't see why I should. I know you feel hard done by, but how do you think I feel? Think about what I've had to deal with these past few months. All I wanted was a normal life, and then all this happens. Starting to think there was no one home. Yeah, I was just upstairs. Yeah. Anyone in? No, no, Jim was staying at a mate's and Leo's gone out. Mm. Is that for my benefit? Yeah, well, I'm not It's your own fault. If you're going to wear irresistible aftershave, you can't blame me if I can't keep my hands off you. Yeah? Uh, hold on a sec, we need to talk. We'll talk later. No, 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 but we need to talk now. Mm. Oh, look, I'm serious. We've got to think this through before we go too far. We've got to think about what this would do to your mum. And Leo, I mean, it's still crazy about you. Mick, even if I didn't fancy you like mad, you know I'd never go for your Leo. He's just a kid. But he doesn't realise that. If you found out about us, then you'd be devastated. And your mum, she'd be even worse. You're right to think about their feelings, but what about ours? You're trying to tell me you'd just rather forget about things between us? No. Besides, I won't find out. Not if we're careful. Well, what about Hugh? You said you liked the name. I've just gone off it. Noah's nice. No, he'll spend the rest of his life enduring countless arc jokes. <laughs> what do you like, then? Well, what's wrong with traditional names? We always said we liked them, and they're back in vogue. George. Yes, it's Georgie Porgy. I... Jack. E. Dixon. Yeah, I suppose you're right. She wouldn't look <laughs> like that. What about Henry? It's Henry VIII. Mm. Harry. You liked Harry. Oh, yes, I, I suppose I do like Harry. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, it's very classic, very royal. <laughs> yeah, no, I think my father had an Uncle Harry. That would uphold the tradition. Harry Farnham. Hey, that sounds good. Mm. And it can't be shortened. No. So, what do you think, Harry? <laughs> Look, he's smiling. He likes it. <laughs> Great. Well, that's settled then. Right, I'd better get going, otherwise it'll be closed. Harry Farnham. Well, let's hope it stays that way. How do you mean? Well, Jackie still has four weeks to change her mind. Oh, now, come on. That's the last thing that Jackie would want to do. She just wants to get on with her life. I hope so. Look, this little chap is going to be registered a Farnham, and that's the way it's going to be. So don't you worry. Come on, let's go upstairs. So long, I thought there was something up. No, no, I was upstairs uh, polishing. Oh yeah, handy with a duster, are you? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, can I come in or what? What? Yeah, yeah, sure. Come in. I don't know. Sometimes you seem to be in a world of your own. I reckon you were on that couch having a crafty kip. Why bother? What's the matter? 
Oh, I thought I'd go and talk to Danny and see if I could sort things out between us, and he won't even speak to me. Just stood outside his room like an idiot. Well, just give him some time. He'll come round in the end. Oh, and in the meantime, I just have to put up with his insults and dirty looks. Great. Nice one. There's some crackers in there. Yeah, it's the best compilation around. All those old singles you thought you lost over the years. Yeah, it's brilliant. You should know, you know. Why not? Nothing else. It'll get me a few extra chips at the chippy. What's that smell? What smell? So that's your secret. What? I say you get your head so shiny. You use furniture polish. <laughs> yeah, I went a bit mad when I was doing the cleaning before. Look, uh, I'm going to have to get off. Um, it's my shift at the chippy. Oh, can't you swap with Lindsay? Oh, well, no, I promise. You know, uh, she's got something on. I'm sorry. It's all right. Can't just barge in and expect you to drop everything, can I? I'll get going. Can I just nip to the loo before I go? What? Yeah. Yeah, of course. I meant to go before I left work. It's all that tea. Now, there won't be a jury as such, just a coroner who will ask us questions as the witnesses to the death. And will the public be allowed in to watch us lie? Ollie. There'll be a small public gallery, but it's unlikely that anybody will attend, so the whole thing should be over in a few hours. A few hours I could well do without. So, after the coroner has asked any questions he has, he will sum up and then try to clear up anything he thinks is questionable, any anomalies surrounding the case. Like why we let him fall to his death, you mean? As long as we get our story straight, there'll be no reason for the coroner to suspect anything. We just keep it simple. There was a struggle. He fell accidentally, just like we told the police when they first interviewed us. It was all over in a heartbeat, remember? Oh, I don't know. I, I just think that we should stick as close to the truth as possible. I, uh, I tried to pull him up, but he fell. We mustn't get dragged into giving too many details. It'll only lead to error, and we certainly shouldn't start changing our story. We just tell them that it was over in a heartbeat, and that way there'll be less likelihood of our version of events contradicting each other. All this deceit obviously comes naturally to you, but I just don't know if I can keep it up. Well, you've got no choice. Everything's at stake here. If we mess this up, we're looking at a manslaughter charge, or even murder. How the hell did I get dragged into all of this? What you have to focus on is how we get out of it. <sighs> Happening more and more. Sorry? Well, whenever Dan or I walk into the room, you two clam up. Everything all right? Yeah. Fine, thanks. I can go to the toilet on my own, you know. And before you asked, yes, I did wash my hands. Sorry. You're right, Mick. You seem really edgy. Oh, no, I'm fine. I just don't want to be late. Put me the chippy off, you know. All right. I can take a hint. I'll get going. Before I go, I want a big kiss and cuddle. Hiya, love. Thought you might like to borrow that. May give you a few ideas for a name for the little fella. Thousands in there. Oh, thank you, but uh, we finally picked one. Max has gone to the registry office to sort it all out. Oh, right, so we are you going to call him? Harry! Oh, that's brilliant. Hey, now we've got two little princes. Well, well our fella and your little fella. You know, Prince William and Prince Harry. Two little princes of Brookie close. <laughs> Wait till I tell Jackie she'll be made up. I'll see you later. stairs yet. What if your mum had come back in? I heard her go. That was scary. I think I need something to take my mind off it. What perfume's my mum got on? <laughs> I, I don't feel in the mood now. It's OK, she's gone. Oh, but I feel last. This just isn't right. You can't tell me you don't feel just a little bit guilty. Of course I do. But I can't help it if I'm attracted to you like this. You feel the same way too, otherwise we wouldn't be doing it. Look, you've just seen how close we were to being caught. We've got to take this as a warning. 
She's gone now. We're as safe as we'll ever be. We can't fight it. Danny? Can I come in? Yeah, sure. What's up? Well, it's not every day you see somebody over a cliff. Uh, no. Well, not around here, anyway. <laughs> Have a chip? Yeah, go on. Help yourself. So, um, who took the tumble like? Wicked witch of the South Sex. Marcus. Oh. What, over the cliff? It was in the local papers in the lakes. It wasn't covered here, though. Oh, yeah. Well, don't suppose it would be. So, uh, you all right about it? I mean, it all sounds a bit scary to me. It was. I thought he was going to kill us all. So did you actually, you know, like, see him go over? No, I'd actually see it happen. So how'd he fall? I mean, Dad had a fight. He must have slipped. And the busies are buying that, like? Yeah, of course. Dan and Ellen have told them what happened. There's going to be an inquest, but that's just routine. No one's suspicious or anything. Well, I'll tell you what. If he'd gone over the cliff after threatening my family, I'd be banged up by now. That's because you actually care about your family. All my dad cares about is that slag next door. It's a bit strong, isn't it? Yeah, well, she is. She slept with Marcus. That's why he came after us. You are? She was carrying on with him? I thought he was round here a lot. That's what she's like. That's why I want rid of her. Dad was made to look so stupid when Marcus announced what him and Kitson had been up to. So what happened then? Well, when Kitson said she wanted to marry Dad, Marcus went mad. He kept his prisoner all night. And didn't your old fella have a go at him, like? <sighs> he must be joking. Tried to talk his way out of it. That's all he ever does. Wish he had thrown Marcus off the cliff. At least that way I'd know he cares about me. Well, kill someone to prove he loves you. Come on, Danny. Your dad does care. And it's better that he can control himself instead of divvies like me who just steam in and cause more trouble than there was to begin with. At least you're willing to fight instead of stand by and do nothing. If Dad did care, then he'd dump Helena just like he dumped Mum. Instead of trying to work things out, even though he knows I hate her cuts. would be better off without them. Hey, come on, don't be talking like that. It's true. No one cares about me or what I think. Mum, Dad, anyone. Not too wrapped up in our own pathetic little lives. Maybe he's followed Louise to the library. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. I just don't like seeing him upset like that. It makes me feel so guilty, like it's all my fault. But it isn't. And besides, he blames me. That's what he says. But it's me who he thinks has let him down. And maybe he's right. He doesn't think that. He knows you'd do anything for him. Oh, I don't know. I couldn't bear it if he did think I'd failed him. I, I've got to let him know how much I care, and I've got to get through this inquest. Otherwise, I'll lose him, and I couldn't live with that. I'm telling you, Danny, your dad did the right thing. <laughs> Imagine if he'd gone steaming in there when this had the ball Marcus first arrived, yeah? I mean, the man sounds like he was deranged. He could have done anything. Who knows what might have happened? But instead of kicking off like I would have done, your dad bided his time, didn't he, eh? And you all came out of it in one piece. The truth is, he hasn't got the bottle. I don't believe that. Your dad would do anything for you. No way. Danny, I'm telling you, he would. He doesn't even notice I exist half the time. Do you know something? I think you two should sit down and have a proper talk. Now you're starting to sound like him. Hey, there's nothing wrong with talking things through, you know. Might even help you two sort things out. I wish I would have talked to my eldest lad more when he was alive. Look, do you want me to have a word with your dad, eh? Let him know how you feel. You can do what you want, but it won't make any difference. He's too concerned with Kits and to worry about me. Don't you worry. I'll soon put him straight. Make sure he knows what's up with you. A little bit of mediation's all that's needed here, Danny. I'll sort it out, OK? Coming up next, 
just whatever your shape and whatever your size, learn to look great with a bit of clever shopping. Get ready to climb onto the catwalk and flaunt the latest fashions. A new series, She's Gotta Have It, here on 4. Listen, uh, I know you've only just finished work, like, but um, I was wondering if I could have a bit of a word. Yeah, sure. What's it about? Well, I had a bit of a chat with your lad the other day. Poor kid. Seems to have the weight of the world on his shoulders. Why? What did he say? Well, he told me about what had happened. You know, when you went to the Lake District, like, what a palaver, eh? He what? I think he just needed to unburden himself. I couldn't believe it. Sounded real Hammer House of Horror stuff. What exactly did he tell you? He told me everything. You know, about that psycho holding your old prisoner in your little oldity cottage, torturing the car, the lot. Who else knows about this? Hey, oh, don't be worrying. No, I'm not the sort who'll blab. I'm only told our Jackie and Lindsay. Right, so basically the whole world knows. Who'd have thought today? I mean, I thought he was a really sound fella. There's me putting him on some big pedestal just because I'd heard him speaking on the radio. And all the time, it turns out he's an the ball. <laughs> you must still be having nightmares. Yes, yes, it was very traumatising for us all, which is why I'd appreciate you not mentioning it to anybody else. Oh, my lips are sealed. I just wanted you to know how upset your lad was. Listen, between you and me, I think we should have a word with him. I mean, he's got it into his head that you didn't do enough to defend him or something. I mean, God knows what he expected you to do with that nutter running round waving his poker. How dare you! Offer me advice on how to bring up my son. Hey, no, well, don't take it that way. Listen, believe me, I wish someone had had a quiet little word with me when our little Jimmy was going off the rails. Well, just keep your nose out of my business. Do I make myself clear? I'm sorry, I was only trying to help. If you don't have a word with him... Didn't you hear me? I said that's enough. Jimmy, what have you been saying? I never said nothing. He just went off his cake for no reason, him. I swear. <laughs> Oh, why are you shouting? You did. Are you okay? What's wrong? I'll tell you what's wrong. We're the talk of the neighbourhood. It would seem there's not a single person on the close who doesn't know what happened in the Lake District. Where's Dan? What, in his room? Why? Dan! Who have you been talking to? Daniel! I want to talk to you! Ollie, calm down. What the hell do you think you're playing at? What are you talking about? I'm talking about you telling the likes of Jimmy Corkill about our private business. Are you completely stupid? Oh, come on, Ollie. Sorry. Yes, well, it's a bit late for sorries now the damage is done. Thanks to you, we won't be able to walk out our front door without everyone whispering about us. Go on, get out of my sight. I said go! Oh, this is just great, isn't it? Ollie, you're completely overreacting. Oh, you think so, do you? Yes! But don't you see? If everyone knows, then it's only a matter of time before people start piecing things together. And if you carry on behaving like this, it's only a matter of time before they realise that you're a man with a very guilty conscience. Now, get a grip of yourself. I couldn't believe it. All I was doing was trying to do him a favour, and that's the thanks you get. Flipping loon. Who's a loon? Him. Ginger nut next door. Blew up at me for having a word with their Danny. Well, that'll teach you to interfere in other people's business in the future. I wasn't interfering. I promised Danny, hadn't I? There I was on my way home, made up with myself, you know, my first payday. Thinking everything was coming up roses for a change. Well, don't let him next door spoil it for 
for you. Oh, don't you worry, I won't. Look at that, look at that. 750 necker paid into my bank account today. Oh, <laughs> let's have a look. Do you know, I never thought I'd see this day. You know what this means, don't you, love, hey? For the first time in my life, I'm legit. Do you know what I'm going to do tonight? Go on a pub crawl and blow the lot. No, funny ollies, I'm not. I'm going to pop round to the hole in the wall. I'm going to take this lovely bit of plastic and put it in the machine. I'm going to take out a hundred knicker and treat us all to a slap-up meal in town. What do you think? Hang on a minute, Jimmy. We haven't won the pool, do you know? Every penny of that money's accounted for. I think we are entitled to spoil ourselves just this once, Jackie. Yeah, but if we start throwing money away like there's no tomorrow, we'll end up in the same boat as we've always been. Besides, Kylie's gone to Lawrence tonight and I'm on a starvation diet till after this wedding. All right, all right, all right. Let me at least treat us to a Chinese takeaway. How about that? Hey, that's not going to break the bank, is it? All right, Flash, Harry. If you insist, I think we can just about stretch to that. Good. That's settled, then. Right, well, I think that's about it. Uh, thanks for coming, and I'll let you know as soon as I've made my decision. Thanks very much. Hello. Hello, right, Pops. You never told me you had a date. Behave yourself, Michael. She's old enough to be my mother. I'm recruiting, aren't I, eh? Looking for new staff. The way my business is going, I need someone at the nerve centre full time. I can't be bad. Tell you what, I'd have been laughing all the way to the bank if I didn't have to fork out for that carpet Dolly Sparrow groomed. Well, you should have got yourself some insurance. You wouldn't have to worry about these things. In fact, I can help you out there. Uh, no disrespect, but uh, I think I'd rather help myself out. So what can you do in the interviews in here, anyway? Well, it didn't seem right to ask women up to me flat. They might think I'm a pervert or something. You are? Hey. I saw the Farnans with their little kid last week. He's a gorgeous little fellow, honestly. And I know they say old babies look the same, but I'm telling you, Michael, he was the spitting image of our Josh. Don't suppose you've heard anything from Bev lately? Joking, aren't you? Sad thing is, kids that age soon forget. Don't suppose he even remembers me. Jolly well, Dad. Made a right mess of things there, didn't I? Well, you pervs usually do. Anyway, you're getting yourself back on your feet now. Ah, yeah, yeah, suppose so. So, seeing as this business of yours is doing so well, any chance of a bevy? Ah, go on, then. I've only got one more candidate to see, and she's not due till 6 o'clock. Nice one. Come in. Why are you, love? Listen, I need you to go straight back out for me again, do you mind? What? Me and your auntie Nan's got the suitcase for me. A suitcase? Yeah, I need to start me packing. For the Labour Party conference. Oh, go on, love. I'll have your tea ready for you when you get back. Hi, right, Jimmy. Oh, all right, Pinocchio. You what? You what? When I saw you snogging that Andrea, you told me that you'd finished with her mother. Yeah, I have. I watch out, nearly had me eye out with that nose of yours there. What are you talking about? Well, if you'd finished with the mother, how come I saw you snogging the face off a of boulder's brass yesterday? Oh. Huh. Yeah. Oh. Look, Mick, it's none of my business, but I just hope you realise you're playing with fire. Tell me about it. Remember when Sinbad was two-timing with our Val, eh? He thought it was all one big laugh, didn't he? No arm. Yeah, well, he wasn't laughing when the two of them found out and all hell broke loose. I know. Yeah, and Mick, what you're doing is a million times worse. It's a mother and daughter, for God's sake. Look, if that Pauline never finds out, Mick, I am telling you, you can wave goodbye to your meat and two veg. Jimmy, I know I'm being totally out of order, but my head is wrecked with all this. Look, Mick, I don't want to lecture you. I mean, you know, you, more than anyone, need a bit of light relief after everything you've been through. But just don't say I didn't warn you when it all blows up in your face. Oh, Mick, I've one more word to say to you. What's that? Bob it. I've just had a word with Dan. I think I've made things a million times worse. Oh, he'll be okay. I'm not so sure. He seems convinced I'm a spineless coward. Well, he's wrong, and he'll soon realize that. <laughs> it's really saying something when your son would prefer Jimmy Corkill as a father. That's not true. Isn't it? I know it's completely absurd, but there is one way I could redeem myself. What's that? Telling the truth. Ollie, you know there's no way in a thousand years you could ever do that. Ever do what? Oh, hi. Did you get everything you needed? 
Yep, all set for my first day back at school. Have there been any messages for me? No. I was hoping to hear some news on when they're going to release Marcus's body. I've already told you, the coroner probably won't release the body till after the inquest. But why? Well, I'm sure it's only procedure. Ollie's right. That seems a bit weird. I thought they only kept hold of the body for so long if the person had been murdered or something. Well, not necessarily. I just want to bury my dad. Not much to ask for, is it? I wonder if she'll be so convinced that he deserves a full state funeral when she reads this lot. What is it? Marcus's records. Well, how did you get them? Well, I wanted to know a little more about all those years Marcus spent locked away, so I did a bit of digging. I don't understand. Well, if these don't make her realise what he was really like, nothing ever will. Why is it always me that has to do this? Even though I'm trying to get organised to go away. How come this house always gets so untidy, even though there's supposed to be no one here all day? Oh, well, make us a cup of tea. I've got to do this. Go on, you're not going to see me for a week. Slave for you for a week, you mean? Bring your nice brezzy back from Blackpool. Mm. All right, that's loads big enough. Right then, better go and decide what I'm taking with me. No, yeah. well, you better make the most of it. So that's the last time you'd be seeing Blackpool with that lot. My dad was saying it's not good enough for Blair's babes anymore. He doesn't know what he's talking about, so do yourself a favour. Ignore everything he says. So why are you going to Bournemouth next year, then? Turning the backs on all the traditional supporters just because it's nice and handy for the London lot. They're not trying to turn the backs on anyone. It's just people like your dad trying to blow things out of all proportion. They've outgrown Blackpool. The conference facilities just aren't big enough anymore. It's as simple as that. So why don't they move to Birmingham or somewhere like that? You know, somewhere nice and central. What happens if you've got to come all the way down from Scotland, eh? That's not very fair, is it? Jason, don't start trying to pretend that you're interested in politics just to wind me up. You know what, Mum? You should have been a politician. Isn't that what they did? Change the subject every time they want to avoid giving an answer? I'm not avoiding anything. I'm just saying if you had anything between those ears of yours, you'd realise there's a lot more important issues than where they hold the party conferences. That's all. Nice one, Jace. You really got air going. Watch and learn, kiddo. Watch and learn. Why not? Because you've already got a job. Dad, you're joking, aren't you? Well, I'll end up sopping myself if I spend the rest of my life having doors slammed in my face. Our Jackie sacked me from this place, and that film business has come to nothing. In fact, everything I touch seems to turn to disaster. Precisely why I don't want you at the helm in my nerve centre. And besides that, Michael, I just don't want to work with family again. Look what happened last time I was running this place without Jacqueline. We nearly fell out for good. Yeah, well, thanks for your vote of confidence. I'm going to bog. Excuse me, don't suppose you know where I'll find a Mr. Dixon? Anthea! Ron! Good God, I don't believe it. Can't move. We should freeze out for this. Keep it for the buffet at the wedding, save a few, Bob. Aye, 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 you. There'll be no scrimping at this wedding. You are going to be sent off good style this time. Have you thought about doing your guest list, Jess? Not really, no. It's a nightmare. I mean, I don't want to go inviting cousins that I haven't seen for years, but then I can't go inviting Uncle Billy without Rod and Tracy and all, can I? Well, see, you don't want to worry about Tracy. I mean, she's not going to be coming all the way over from Australia, is she? Especially having the expense of her own wedding. Aye this time next year. We'll be going off somewhere hot and sunny. Who will? You, me and our wills abroad our first proper family holiday together. Oh, why? When did you decide all this? Well, there's no reason why we can't afford it now, is there? Hey, a man of my age never been on a plane. That's unbelievable, that is. Well, I'd be able to put that right now you're a teacher, won't you? I certainly will. We are on the up, this family. <sighs> Look at us. Drinking wine instead of lager with our tea. <laughs> Reading the telegraph instead of the mirror. That's only because it was the only one left when you robbed it from the staff room. Hey, you, that's beside the point. Who'd have thought it, eh? Us corkles going all middle class on ourselves. Well, to us kids, chin chin. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> 
must be 19. Let's just say it was a very long time ago. <laughs> I can't believe you two were in the same class. Hey, first girl I ever kissed was Anthea. I think we were about nine at the time. <laughs> if things had been different, you know, she could have been your mum. Right, well, um, I'll leave you two to catch up, eh? Nice to meet you, Anthea. Yeah, and you. See you later, Dad. Yeah, to our son. Well, this is a real turn up for the books, isn't it? I'll say. Look, it was lovely to see you again, but I should probably be making a move. Thought you came for an interview? To be honest, Ron, if I'd known it was going to be you interviewing me, I don't think I'd have come in the first place. Rubbish. Look, you can't let what happened when we were a pair of snotty nosed kids come between us. That's not quite the whole truth, is it? Let's sit over there, eh? Need a bit more coffee. I thought these had been dry by now. Must make a start on me packet. Get yourself all prepared for your dirty weekend with Tony Blair, eh? Didn't I tell you? I'm sharing the room with John Prescott. <laughs> Somewhere. How's your training going on, little sis? It's your big race next month, isn't it? Why does everyone keep going on about it all the time? Excuse me, I'm sorry I opened my mouth. You lot are more obsessed with it than what I am. So anyone ever goes on about? OK, then, well, I won't bother in the future. Yeah. Well, I mightn't even be going in for it anyway. Why not? Cos I need new trainees, which is going to cost at least 80 quid. I might as well forget it. You've already got a good pair. I know, but these are wrecked now. I need new ones. You spoiled little brat. You don't really need two pairs of trainees. And you don't need two girlfriends, but you've still got them. Hey, you, you cheeky little cow. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, nothing. Doesn't sound like nothing to me. Well, she needs to go belt that one. Aye, aye, if anybody's going to belt anyone round here, it'll be me. He's just a big kick-off. I haven't even said nothing. <sighs> Do you know what? I dread to think what'll be going on while I'm away. Got you two acting like five-year-olds. Oh, Nicky coming home and throwing a guts up all over the place. Do you know if I had any sense, I wouldn't bother coming back. Pretty harrowing stuff, isn't it? Just makes me realise how lucky we are. Lucky? Still to be here. Mm, that smells nice. It's only left for me. You can smell it. You do surprise me. What? Oh, ignore me. I was just being facetious. I don't understand. Wake up and smell the coffee. It's an expression. Yeah, I know that. I just don't know what you're getting at. What I'm getting at is the way you keep trying to justify Marcus's behaviour in the lakes rather than accept the fact that the man was plain evil. Eleanor. Well, I'm sorry if it sounds hard, Louise, but we are talking about a man who went out of his way to destroy my life and who, in effect, succeeded. Who knows whether things will ever be the same between Ollie and I. Well, what's brought all this on? This has Marcus's prison records. Well, how do you get them? Well, it's not how they got them that's important. It's what's in them. It's here in black and white, Louise, as clear as the nose on my face. Your father was nothing but a thug. What? Well, how else would you explain him biting off the ear of another inmate? Does that sound like the behaviour of a saint to you? He wouldn't do that. It says here that the attack was completely unprovoked. And then he spent three years in a secure psychiatric unit. That's how dangerous they thought he was. Well, don't take my word for it. Have a look yourself. Might go round the corner for a pint, anyone fancy? Oh, no. I'm too full to move. You know, I won't be able to eat or drink till after the wedding, Mel. Don't talk stupid, will you? There's not a pick on you. I need to lose half a stone. Lindsay, you'll be falling down the side of that couch. I wish. Look, love, if you lose any more weight for this wedding, you won't look well. You should listen to your dad, you know, Linz. He is a teacher, after all. Exactly. And I know best. And I know, if I don't lose weight, I'll be walking down this aisle like Humpty Dumpty. It's harder getting through to you than it is some of the kids at my school, do you know that? Oh, thanks, Dad. Well, it's true, I'm telling you. There's times when you feel like you're talking to a brick wall. Some of them have even fallen asleep on me in class. It can make you paranoid, I'm telling you. I mean, you're standing there talking to yourself, you're chalking away on the blackboard, and you turn round and half of them have nodded off. I don't know whether it's the subject they find boring or the sound of my voice. Ha ha, very funny. <laughs> I'm being serious here. There's one girl in particular, she must have fallen asleep about three times. Beginning to think she's got one of them rare what's it? Diseases or something? Probably too many late nights in front of the telly. Yeah, I suppose so. Anyway, one thing's for sure, it can't cause you more headaches than your last career, can it? At least you won't have gangsters driving past the house, shooting bullets through the windows. Uh, yeah, that's true. 
from now on, drugs, guns, or anything else illegal don't even exist as far as this family is concerned. Well, even if it is true, it's only a result of the whole regime he's had to live with all those years, all the brutality he suffered. How do you explain the behaviour that put him there in the first place? Well, you can show me as many files as you want, but don't go thinking you can change my feelings because you can't. Surely she can't stay in denial forever. What makes you so sure she's the one in denial? Well, what's that supposed to mean? Well, Marcus may have been a maniac, but I don't believe anyone's born that way. Louise is right. He was a victim of circumstance. And who's to say that I wouldn't have ended up the same if I'd lived his life? Please, don't you start. Why? Because it's easier if everything is nice and simple. Marcus was evil, full stop. Does that make you feel less guilty? I don't believe this. And there are no happy families. Sam, where have you been? It's got to do with you. Look, Dan, we can't go on like this. I know that you've got it into your head that I did nothing to protect you in the lakes, but it's not true. Sorry? Have I missed something? Look, I, I tried to help you in my own way. What was that? By standing there shaking, you mean? Oh, don't be so obtuse. No, no, come on, tell me. Show me the proof. Well, I... Spit it out, then. Come on. You did nothing, and you know it. You're really sad, you know that? You let people walk all over you. Eleanor was sleeping with Marcus behind your back and you didn't throw her out. You still haven't. Look, it's not as simple as that. Isn't it? Well, I'll make it simple. Either you throw her out or I'll leave. Dan, you can't threaten me with that. Can't I? I just have. And you said you'd take me out for a pint and never thought you meant a pint of shandy. I'm not encouraging you to get drunk, you know. You're still under age, remember? And you're only... Put your money away, Mick. These are on me. You're all right, Jimmy. No, I insist. It's my first payday, and I'm feeling a bit flush, aren't I? What are you having a pint of lager? Uh, no, a uh, glass of the house white, love. I'm on the wine tonight. <laughs> Stay to you. Yeah, so take these drinks and grab a table over there, will you? So, Mick, made any decisions yet about you know what? Yeah, I've definitely decided to finish with Pauline. Oh, man. Which one's she? The mother or the daughter? Mother. You are playing with fire, Michael. I really like Pauline, too, but I can't get the Andrea out of my mind. I'm not prepared to let her go. Well, you only get one life, don't you? And if something makes you happy, then you've got to make the most of it. And what are you going to tell the mother? Hmm? Not the truth, I take it. Well, I look mad as well as stupid. No, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. See you, Jimmy. Yeah, later. Billy Baxter, oh, what a way to go. They reckon he wouldn't have felt a thing. Do you know, I remember having a fight with him in the playground because he accused me of nicking his ollies. Hmm? The way things work out, eh? Well, that's the longest interview I've ever had. Yeah. <laughs> it's been great chatting on about the old days. Look, um, well, don't think I'm pushing you to nothing, but will you fancy a drink one night next week? Oh, I don't think so. Oh, come on, it's only a drink, isn't it? There's no harm in that. Dad, some fella's just been on the phone about a job. He wants you to phone him back urgently. Yeah, thanks, son. Right, I'll leave you to it. Er, uh, you sure you won't stay for another one? I'm sure. Bye, Ron. Bye, Mike. Bye. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a ring in a week, eh? Yeah, great. Uh, I'll see how I'm fixed. So, what's the score there, then? I told you we were at school together. You look very cosy. I get the impression there's more to it than that. Yeah, well, you got the wrong impression, didn't you? No, no need to bite me head off. The Channel 4 book, Total Brookside by Jeff Tibbles, is available now from most bookshops. Well, it's E-Day for Phoebe and friends next on 4 with the implantation of the embryos. But will she have a welcoming womb? Find out in a moment. <laughs>